Hi, my name is Amber. Welcome back to my channel, Books and Beaches. So today we have to talk about November's new releases. I can't believe we're this far into 2023 and you should probably take a tally on how many times I've said that in each one of these videos. Um, but I thought that we might be slowing down a bit in November because I know a lot of the holiday books came out in October and we're getting closer to the holidays, as crazy as that is to say. And so I just kind of assumed releases would slow down too. And as I began to do my research, I was definitely, definitely wrong. So I have a ton of new releases to talk about for November. And I tried my best to not favor thrillers this time. I know I always say I'm going to try to, but it was for sure pointed out last month that most of them were thrillers and that is totally my bad because I do sh or I should um, try to be a little bit better about not being so thriller heavy even though that is my favorite favorite genre by far. So grab a snack, grab a drink. It's going to be a little bit of a long one because November 7th is our first release date and it is quite quite the day. So uh, I got my water here. I might need it because there's going to be a lot to say. Needless um, to say, I guess, is I'm going to try to keep some of these descriptions pretty short. Um, not only are a few of these uh, sequels, but I just, we don't need to be here for forever and forever. Um, so we'll try to keep them short and sweet. But as always, I will have all of the books I mentioned linked down below just in case you want to check them out more. So Let's jump in. November 7th is our very first release date in November. And yeah, there's a lot of them. So our very first book is When I'm Dead by Hannah Morrissey. I actually already have a copy of this one. <laughs> it's sitting right here in front of me. Um, this was an early release with Book of the Month. I still need to read The Widowmaker, uh, which is book number two in this series. From what I've been told, you don't need to read them in order. They kind of all just fall within the same world, but I'm kind of a stickler about reading things in order anyways. So, uh, but like I said, this one's coming out on, on November 7th and kind of the tagline on here, I've got my computer with me. So as I'm looking down per usual, it says one girl murdered, another one missing and a medical examiner desperate to uncover the truth. Um, and it's all back in Black Harbor, which is a fictional town in Wisconsin um, by Hannah Morrissey. So I'm sure many of you probably picked that one up with Book of the Month if you are a subscriber. Uh, if you aren't, my link is always below. No pressure, not sponsored. Um, but so that one is our first one coming out on the 7th. Uh, next up, I think is a very, very highly sought after book. And I have not read the first one in the series, but this is Iron Flame which is the second book um, by Rebecca Yaros in, I think it's called The Empyrean World? I don't know. Sarah from Sarah's Nightstand is probably like screaming at me right now because I know she loved this book. But so this is going to be the second in that series. So I actually don't know much about the first one. I think I've heard a lot of uh, talk about dragons, but the second one is coming out. And even the cover um slash end pages on Amazon right now it like on Amazon it's solid black end pages but I think the Barnes and Noble pre-order has like some specialty pages so feel free to check that out if that is something that sounds up your alley uh next coming out uh and this one I believe is non-fiction which is perfect because I participate in nonfiction November. So this is called Class. It's a memoir of motherhood, hunger, and higher education by Stephanie Land. I believe she wrote Maid, which I have not picked up either. I think I have that one on my Kindle. But this one says, oh, and, oh it was a hit Netflix series. I forgot about that. Um, this is a struggling mother barely making ends meet as a house cleaner. Oh, wait. Sorry, that's the Netflix series. Um, this is a memoir about college, motherhood, poverty, and life after The Maid. So this is like a continuation on. So if you were interested in reading The Maid, this kind of sounds like that would still be um, right up your alley. It's one I'm going to add to my list, but I feel like I should probably read Maid first. Then next up, one very popular author I have not picked up yet. I actually had received a free copy of one of her books and ended up giving it to a friend because it just I knew it wouldn't probably be 
on my list, but that this book is Check and Mate by Allie Hazelwood. Um, it's, ooh, and it's a day, why a, why a debut? There we go. Words today. Um, it says life's moving pieces bring rival chess players together in a match for the heart. So, um, I guess this will be Allie Hazelwood's kind of foray into young adult literature. So if you've liked some of the things that she had, um, put out before, this one might be for you, depending on whether or not you want to read YA. All right. One that I found during my research, which I, I had not heard of this book before, um, and this would not be a genre that I would think I would normally pick up, but it sounded really interesting. And this is The Future by Naomi Alderman. And it says, um, this is going to be a dazzling tour de force where a handful of friends plot a daring heist to save the world from the tech giants whose greed threatens life as we know it. And I thought that sounded really interesting. So I, let me look and see. I am not sure what this is actually going to be categorized because now I'm looking it up um, via Amazon, but I'm wondering if it's a little bit more like sci-fi, maybe? I'm not quite sure. I'd have to re uh, probably look it up via Goodreads, but that caught me eye and I was like, mm, that would be a different one to include in my video. That is not my standard suggestion. So um, one that I'm sure many people are talking about because I think this author is pretty popular. Um, this is The Good Part by Sophie Cousins. I believe I read something by Sophie Cousins before. Um, I want to say it was probably like a New Year's book. No, I can't think of the name of it, of course. But the tagline on this one is, is living the life you wished for really a dream come true? So that one kind of caught my eye. Um, and oh, she's wishing to skip to the good part of her life. And then the next morning she wakes up and she's in a different life. So this could be an interesting read. I, I believe I liked the last one. Now I'm going to look it up and just make sure. Oh, I read this time next year, which is a, um, like a New Year's Eve themed book. So that one sounded interesting and one that I will more than likely put on my list of things interested in, which are all of these. Duh, Amber. I think I say that every time. All right, next one up is The Manor House, and this is by Gilly McMillan. Uh, this one, the cover kind of caught me because I just think it's kind of neat. Um, it says it's going to be a terrifying story of what can happen after all of your dreams come true. So, and the other tagline on here is be careful what you wish for. It is... Uh, it says childhood sweethearts are a normal loving couple until a massive lottery win changes their lives overnight. So I can only imagine where that one's going to go. I don't want to know too much more as in all of my thrillers, but uh, it caught my eye for sure. Uh, like I said, we've got a whole list of them coming out on the seventh. So continuing with the seventh uh, is Bookshops and Bone Dust. And this is by Travis Baldry. This, I know it's part of the Legends and Lattes world, but I can't remember if it's a prequel or a sequel. Um, it is already predicted to be a Barnes and Noble's best fantasy book of 2023. It hasn't even come out yet. Um, so yeah, it's set in the world of Legends and Lattes and takes us on a journey of high fantasy, first loves, and secondhand books. So I am sure some of you that have read Legends and Lattes can kind of fill me in on where this one is going to fit in, but I know that was such a popular book. It's kind of always been on the, my like back radar, but I'm sure there are many, many people looking forward to that one coming out on the 7th. Another one I found in my researching, and I want to say this one is YA, um, and it's called The Way I Am Now, and this is by Amber Smith which is in the series of The Way I Used to Be. And The Way I Used to Be is one I think I saw all over TikTok. It was like, I want to say it was part of the like the books that TikTok says will make you cry. And so this is going to be book two. Um, and you know what? I don't even really want to read too much into it just because I think the first thing I see on here might even spoil the first book for me. Not that I was ever sure that I wanted to pick it up, but I don't want to read any more in that one. Um, so Oh, uh, the debut was the first one. And I'll talk about that one. The way I used to be says, um, it's about a girl starting high school. Ooh, 
and it looks like it's going to deal with some tough topics. You know what? I'm just going to link them both below and I will let you decide whether or not you want to check those ones out just because those are some, some trigger warnings I don't necessarily want to cross. So, all right. Also coming out on the 7th, like I said, this is quite the day, is Where He Can't Find You by Darcy Coates. And I want to say this is also YA. Um, and it's going to be thriller horror. And it's a, the chilling legend of a monster no one can escape. And I loved the one that it, this caught my eye originally just because it says, don't walk alone or the stitcher will find you. <laughs> and it talks about a haunted town haunted by disappearance disappearances. It kind of even looks like there's going to be this little rhyme. So don't walk alone or the stitcher will find you. Don't stay out late or the stitcher will take you. Don't close your eyes or the stitcher will remake you. So yeah, <laughs> that one for sure caught my eye. Continuing on on the 7th, uh, for those of you that are into nonfiction, uh, Barbra Streisand's memoir is coming out. So probably not too much to say about that one other than it says it's the long-awaited memoir by the superstar of stage, screen, recordings, and television. So for those of you that are a fan of hers or a fan of Broadway, that one might be right up your alley. Another nonfiction that I found when I was doing my research was called Data Baby, My Life in a Psychological Experiment. And this is by Susanna Breslin. I was like, that is a, it's a very capturing title. And it's a memoir about delving into a woman's formative experiences as a, as a well, basically a lab rat in a lifelong psychological study and her pursuit to reclaim autonomy and her identity as an adult. So I just, that topic kind of perplexed me a little bit. So I had to add that one to the list. And then two more, two more, still left on November 7th. Uh, the first one being, uh, it's called Enchanted Hill, and this is by Emily Bain Murphy. And this one says it's going to be a, a historical mystery. So kind of a little bit different twist on, you know, the mystery thriller genre, where two people with a dark shared past collide while working undercover at a glimmering, glimmering mansion on the California coast. And I liked this one because it says it's going to be set in 1930. So I thought that was a, a little bit of a different recommendation to kind of point out uh, that wouldn't be a standard historical fiction or a standard mystery. And then finally, the last book that I have found coming out on November 7th is called The Favorites by uh, Rosemary Hennigan. And this says a graduate student plots a takedown of the popular professor who wronged her sister in this campus novel about privilege, power, and obsession. So that one definitely sounded right up my alley. And yeah, so that rounds out all of the books coming out on November 7th. Yeah, that's just the first release date in November. Holy cow. Yeah, I, I gotta take a drink of water after that one. Whew. But we have more books. So November 14th. Hopefully you're still with me here. November 14th, the very first one I found coming out was The Professor by Lauren Nossett. Now I read another book by Lauren Nossett. It's actually sitting up here and that was The Resemblance, which was a book focusing on kind of more of like the, the dark academia murder at, murder at a college. And this one says it's going to be a thoroughly gripping mystery about power, ambition, and the lengths we will go to in order to succeed. Um, it's paced well and full of tension and it'll stick with you long after the end. And that was um, a quote from Karen Slaughter. If Karen Slaughter is gonna quote your book, I definitely want to, I, I would be interested in picking it up. So it's going to investigate the darkest corners of academic life, ambition, lies, and obsession. So that one may have to go on the um, pre-order list for me. So, cause I did, I did really enjoy um, the previous book I read by her. So next up on the 14th is Good Girls Don't Lie. And this is by Christina Henry. I feel like... I've read something by Christina Henry before, but I could be wrong and I could just be mixing it up with Emily Henry, but I don't remember. It says a sharp edged, supremely twisty thriller. Hello, Amber Buzzwords. <laughs> About three women who find themselves trapped inside stories they know aren't their own. So, uh, yeah, they're going to wake up and just seems like everything is going to be mixed up and wrong. So 
I had to add that one to my list, obviously. Uh, one for, I believe, my historical fiction lovers, uh, which I started a book by this author and I don't think I finished it. But I know some friends of mine are hosting Historathon in November as well. So this could be one you could pick up for that. And this is The Frozen River by Ariel Lahan. And it says, oh yeah, Codename Helene. That's the one I didn't pick up. This is going to be a gripping historical mystery inspired by the life and diary of Martha Ballard, a renowned, uh, renowned, <laughs> goodness gracious, 18th century midwife who investigates a shocking murder that unhinges her small community. So it looks like we're starting out in Maine in 1789. So kind of a time period that probably doesn't get it covered as often. Um, so that one is probably going to be on my list and especially fitting for, like I said, for Historathon happening in November. Uh, next up on the 14th, we have The Little Liar by Mitch Albom. Now I have typically really liked books by Mitch Albom, excuse me, by Mitch Albom. Um, just, yeah, there's a few that definitely come to mind. Um, and I actually did not know he was coming out with a new book. So this one was a surprise to me when I was doing my research and, this one says it's going to be a powerful novel that moves from a coastal Greek city during the Holocaust to America, where the intertwined lives of three survivors are forever changed by the perils of deception and the grace of redemption. So I have a feeling this one, a lot like some of his other books, are going to be very hard hitting. And it is definitely something that I will probably pick up because I have quite enjoyed most of the stories that I've read by him. So coming out on the 14th. All right, another book that I am sure many of you are familiar with this series already. Um, this is the fourth book in Before the Coffee Gets Cold series. Um, and this is one is called Before We Say Goodbye. Now, I'm going to link the cover here. I do not want to do an injustice to this author's name, so I will let you read it on the cover. But I know this is a fairly popular series, and I think it's even available on Kindle Unlimited. So this is book four, and it says, I think we're basically going to come back and have, um, it says readers will once again be introduced to a new set of visitors, which I think is, is some sort of, you know, in this magical coffee house. I was going to start reading the first one and then I just never got to it. Um, so similar to what has happened in the last couple books, I think we're getting that same thing. So, and if I remember right, the first one is you can time travel as long as you do it before your coffee gets cold. So correct me if I'm wrong for those of you that have read that, but this is book four. So, and then the final book coming out on uh, November 14th that I found it during my research was The Bachelorette Party, and this is by Carissa Ann Lynch. And the reason that I definitely picked out this one to put on my list said, it is the locked room thriller that will keep you up all night. I mean, how perfect is that for fall? Unless you don't want to stay up all night, but anyways. And it said it was perfect for fans of Ruth Ware and Lucy Foley, two authors that I quite enjoy. And we're going to be in New Orleans. I love New Orleans. I've only been there once, but... I really enjoyed kind of exploring that city. Um, it says live music, endless drinks, brightly colored attractions, and the perfect place for a party. And it lists all the people that are going to be there. And it begins on a Friday night. Everybody's excited, but then friendly rivalries turn vicious and a game of truth or dare turns deadly. So I don't want to know too much more, but that is definitely one that caught my personal eye. Now, I did not find anything coming out on November 21st in my research. So, and something tells me, I wonder if that is the week of Thanksgiving now that I think about it. So that would kind of make sense, kind of avoiding that holiday. But I did find three books coming out on November 28th. And the first one being The Mystery Guest by Nita Prose. This is the sequel to her book, The Maid. So I have not read that book, The Maid, either. That's two books in this video uh, called The Maid that I have not read. Um, but from what I can see here, it just says a new mess, a new mystery, and it's up to Molly the Maid to uncover the truth. So, oh, and it says, no matter how dirty, in this standalone novel from the number one times bestseller. So I think they're considering this like Molly the Maid as like a grouping of series, but clearly it's going to be a standalone. So that is one I could pick up without having read the first one. So that is definitely good to know. 
Uh, another book coming out on this day is, and I believe this one's YA, is Didn't See That Coming, and this is by Jesse Q. Santanto. I have read another one of her YA books and quite enjoyed it. So this one says, a hilariously fresh and romantic send up to You've Got Mail about a gamer girl with a secret identity and the online bestie she's never met, IRL, until she unwittingly transfers to his school. So... I, I thought that one could be interesting and it could be a good one to kind of pick up and vet and whether or not I want to suggest it to kids at school. So, but like I said, I loved the Dialia Varanti series and I think I read, well, that was unexpected and enjoyed that one for YA. So definitely one that is on my list. And then finally, the last book that I found out, found coming out on November 28th, um, not by any means is this a complete list, but is We Must Not Think of Ourselves. And this is by Lauren Grodstein. I believe I'm pronouncing that right. So this one is going to be World War II historical fiction. It says a heart-wrenching story of love and defiance set in the Warsaw ghetto based on the actual archives kept by those determined to have their stories survive World War II. So I know we are bogged down with a lot of World War II stories, but that is one of my favorite historical fiction like time periods to read about. So I had to pick it up and I think the cover is gorgeous. So like I said, I, I actually haven't picked it up yet, but I had to add it to my list. So those are all of the books that I was interested coming in out in November. And like I said, I thought the year would slow down and maybe December will, but clearly November is going to bring us some great new books to kind of slowly finish out 2023. Are there any other books that I should be adding to my list? Let me know if you know about them in the comments below. As always, if you like this video, feel free to like and subscribe, and I will see you next time.